across our state of 10,000 lakes. They seem to turn into one giant puddle. I mean, here. case in point here this morning, we're going to show you the impacts of the historic flooding from mm -hmm. all the way north in St. Louis County all the way down to Mankato and Faribault and every place in between where state leaders have spent the week surveying the massive amounts of devastation. And near the Rapidan Dam, which is along Blue Earth River, that's just south of Mankato here. New drone footage shows us the moment that one home went underwater. So people in the area, they came out to watch last night. That fast running river you could see how long this white house right here could stand. You could see how the river it's making its way around the dam, so it's eroding the ground beneath the house. And it didn't take long for that erosion to do its damage. Yeah, right there. I mean, it happens so fast. The White House gives in. It tipped over the edge of the cliff as you watch it again here and then makes a big splash into the river. We grew up going there and getting pie. I mean, do a, do a route, get a Pepsi, get a little ice cream. Um, and used to go play in the river down there. Yeah, I mean, lots of memories. So the question remaining for this 114 year old dam is does it stay or does it go? To take this thing out was like going to be $81 million. To fix it would be like $15 million. Officials are optimistic the dam itself will hold. If it doesn't, the public works director says it could cause big environmental problems. They're expected to tell us more about that house collapse later this morning. Meanwhile, the Mississippi River near St. Paul has risen to major flood stage. You can see parts of Harriet Island underwater this morning. Officials say that the worst, though, is still yet to come. Pauline Lee joining us live this morning from St. Paul with a closer look at the rising Mississippi there, Pauline. Yeah, it's just incredible, right? If you guys take a look behind me, you see off into the distance. That's the pavilion right there. If you're familiar with this area, you know the Mississippi runs behind it, not in front of it. All that water you see in front, that is all flooding. Now, at last checked earlier this morning, the river has risen more than a foot from where it was this time yesterday morning. National Water Prediction Service reports the river now at more than 17.6 feet high. Anything over 17 is considered major flood stage, and the Mississippi is expected to rise another four feet or so, potentially cresting sometime this weekend. Crews in the capital city now bracing for the full impact of the rising waters as they block off more roads and trails and pile on those sandbags to more structures to help prevent the water from seeping in. Some people here say they were caught by surprise as to how fast the water has risen. It's just crazy. We went for me and my friend went for a walk five days ago and you could see, you know, we could park in this parking lot. We drove over here and it's just crazy how much has risen in just five days. Now those rising waters means some businesses have had to make that tough decision to close temporarily. Coming up in about half an hour or so, we'll tell you who's open, who's not, and who's trying to hang on, guys. Yeah, lots of good information. Pauline Lee live in St. Paul. Pauline, we'll check in with you a little bit later. Thank you. Well, as rivers continue to crest, volunteers in Minnesota are answering the call, stepping up to help and clean up. On the ground, about 70, uh, 25 Salvation Army volunteers are spread out across the state. They are serving 400 meals every day up north in St. Louis County. And further south, Faribault, the Red American Red Cross is also manning six shelters and a temporary evacuation point for those who have been displaced. The best thing you can do for anyone that you run into that might be impacted for the flood is to let them know to call 211 so that they know the resources out in the communities. The biggest thing to remember for these communities is when you show up is to first be an ear. Never assume what somebody else needs. Ask. Now you can help these safe shelters by donating online at redcross.org or calling 1-800-RED-CROSS. In Waterville, the city has set up an account at Franston Bank and Trust. You can donate online or you can mail a check. There is some good news out of St. Louis County up north this morning. Water levels continue to come down. Storms have caused devastating damage. Uh, they did it the last week. More than 1,500 damage points have been recorded throughout the county. St. Louis County Public Works crews completed repairs. That way they could reopen more than a dozen roads, even as the county is still in a state of public emergency. Now, flooding is causing some health concerns, and later today, a meeting could help you determine if your water is contaminated. Health officials say that if you have a groundwater well, you should take preventative measures to make sure that your well isn't broken and that the flood water doesn't get inside. They'll also hold meetings to discuss nitrate levels in the drinking water. Now, this is for well owners who are in southern Minnesota. You can learn what the state is doing to try to address these health concerns 
The meeting is in Rushford. It's today from 4 to 8. There's another one tomorrow in Mazeppa. That goes from 5 to 8. You can also bring samples of your drinking water to test it for nitrates. We know that a lot of people in the Midwest are up to their necks. I mean, you think about it from here in the metro to Mankato, as far south as the Iowa border, roads have turned to rivers as communities really now preparing for the aftermath. Now at the Rapid and Dam in Blue Earth County, there's new video that captures the moment one family's lives were washed up by the river. So this is video WCCO showed you last night. You can see the White House there. Yes, there on the left side of your screen, barely hanging on after the river went around the Rapid and Dam, eroding the ground near it. Now this is the new video. Oh wow, right there. The house in the water goes from clinging to the cliff to right into the river. Blue Earth County looking into any downstream impacts. Officials saying that the dam itself will hold, but if not, that could cause some major environmental problems. Because of the volume of sediment that's withheld upstream of the dam, and that's more concerning uh, just for the potential ecological impacts of the dam. In nearby Mankato, crews are building a big dirt flood barrier to keep out their rising Minnesota River. City says that this is just a precaution. No one needs to evacuate, but they will alert families if there are any changes. Meanwhile, a mess along I-35. Look at this video. This is video showing the high water heating, the Faribault wood, Woolen Mill. This is the Cannon River causing problems there. A Red Cross emergency shelter just opened up inside the National Guard's Faribault Armory to offer families food, shelter, and cleanup kits. And in the metro, a race against rising water. So here's the view from Kellogg Park in St. Paul. You can see just how far the Mississippi River has traveled up to the Robert Street Bridge. We know it's doing damage across the state and right in the Twin Cities. And the rising waters aren't just closing off streets and trails. No, it's also forcing some businesses to make the tough decision to close temporarily as they wait for those waters to recede. Our Pauline Lee joins us live from St. Paul to tell us about the latest restaurants, Pauline, that are having to close. Yeah, there's a number of them, and that's not what you want to see because that's a lot of money lost for them. I'll get to that in just a second, but I just want to show you off in the distance. You see, that is the pavilion there off way behind it. That is the Mississippi, which I can see from here is actually moving pretty fast. The calmer waters in front, that's all flooding here, and so that is the scene here of the Mississippi. But let's get back to those restaurants here. The Mississippi Pub in Invergrove Heights, one of those restaurants that has chosen to close temporarily. It closed on Sunday, posting these pictures to Facebook of the water continuing to creep in on their patio. The Overboard Bar and Grill, also in Invergrove, closed on Monday. It, too, posted these pictures to social media as crews worked to put up a barrier in an effort to minimize any flooding. And then over at Willie's Restaurant in St. Paul, the dike is in place, and they say they are holding strong, at least for now. Some residents say that they're hoping for the best, not just for the restaurants, but other businesses and the farmers, too. It's one thing to be uh, inconvenienced and suffer minor damage and it's another thing to have your entire structure where you live destroyed or have your uh, living your farm for the year wiped out. Now, the city, house, the city House, which is actually just across the way here on their website, it says they are still open daily. Even despite the flooding, they are watching it very closely and taking things day by day. That's what you'll find on their website. And I, I, guys, I actually just put a call into the pool and yacht club. They are now also closed. You remember mm. three weeks ago today, Water Street right there closed, but access to the pool and yacht club was still open. Unfortunately, now because of the rising waters, they have temporarily closed as well, guys. Right. And when is the expected crest of the Mississippi? So as Joseph mentioned, it's probably going to be maybe Friday, maybe Saturday or so. At last check, maybe about an hour ago, it was at about 17.64 feet. It's supposed to rise another four feet or so before it crests. And like okay. you said, Pauline, a lot of businesses having to take it day by day, hour by hour at this point, waiting for those waters to recede. Right. All right. Pauline Lee live for us in St. Paul this morning. Thank you. Now in Warsaw, Cannon Lake is taking over. Look at these homes and yards surrounded by incoming water. Business owners say that the area looked nothing like this last Saturday. There were just a few puddles back then. And in Waterville, which is about 10 minutes from Warsaw, some people can only get around by boat as they wait for those flood waters to recede. Now Brandon Peterson bought his home back in 2017. It's now surrounded by water. His family evacuated on Friday as the water rose. Now he has flood insurance. 
but some of his neighbors don't. He is preparing for a long cleanup ahead. Everybody down here is going to do what we can. This is one of the best neighborhoods I've ever lived in. Everybody helps everybody. This morning, 44 National Guard members are in Waterville to help pump the water. Governor Tim Walz and Senator Amy Klobuchar got a bird's eye view of the damage in southern Minnesota. They took a helicopter ride to help figure out the cost of cleanup and repairs. This will determine whether the federal government steps in to help. But right now, it's too early to get a full picture. We're not out of the woods yet. Water levels are still rising. We have not reached peak uh, water levels in many of these communities yet. And we know today Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan will tour the damage in southern Minnesota as well. She'll also highlight the resources available to people hurt by the flooding. We don't know every area she's touring, but we do know she'll speak in Mankato. That's at 1030 this morning. And more roads are being closed in southwest Minnesota. This includes major highways going in and out of the region. And right now, about 30 miles of Highway 169 are shut down, and that's because of flooding in that area. Closure stretches from just north of Mankato up to Lesur. This is what 169 looked like in the city of St. Peter. You can see parts of the highway are submerged. The Minnesota River is almost up to the bottom of the historic bridge there. And farther southwest near the Iowa border is the small city of Jackson. There, the Des Moines River is doing this. Look at that. The river has not even reached its highest point just yet. It is expected to crest tonight. When we arrived, we did see crews piling up dirt along the banks. The community set up sandbags and dikes. That way they can save what they can. Some of them can't even get to work simply because the roads are closed. This is basically just foot traffic only. But even with all the stuff going on, they're asking pedestrians to you know, stay out of the area, stay home. Just let them do what they got to do. Minnesotans, many of them in the same boat. So across the state, the 10,000 lakes seem to have turned into one giant puddle. Throughout the next hour, we will show you the impacts of historic flooding from up north in St. Louis County to southern Minnesota, where state leaders have spent the week surveying the massive amounts of devastation. Now, near the Rapidan Dam, which is along Blue Earth River, it's just south of Mankato, new drone footage shows us the moment a house went under. So people came out to the area to watch the fast running river to see how long the White House, that one right there, could stand. So you can see how the river makes its way around the dam, completely eroded ground beneath the house, and then it didn't take long for the erosion to do its damage. Take a look at the video now because right there happens so quickly. White House gives in, tips over the edge of the cliff, and makes a big splash into the river. We grew up going there and getting pie. I mean, do a do a route, get a Pepsi, get a little ice cream, um, and used to go play in the river down there. Now the question remaining for this 114-year-old dam is: Does it stay or does it go? To take this thing out was like going to be 81 million dollars. To fix it would be like 15 million dollars. Now officials are optimistic the dam itself will hold. If it doesn't. The public works director says it could cause big environmental problems. We'll learn more about that house collapse later this morning. Meanwhile, this morning, the Mississippi River near St. Paul has risen to major flood stage. Yeah, parts of Harriet Island are now underwater, and officials say the problem is the worst is still yet to come. Our Pauline Lee joins us live in St. Paul with a closer look because, Pauline, this is impacting not only people but also businesses in that area, too. Yeah, unfortunately, those rising waters, you just can't compete with that. You can't take any chances. As you take a look behind me, you can see there are people down here this morning just wanting to take in the sights for themselves. The pavilion is off into the distance. Those of you who know this area know the Mississippi is behind the pavilion, not in front of it. All that water in front of it is all of the flooding. So the river has risen to more than a foot than what it was this time yesterday. National Water Prediction Service reports the river is now just under 17.7 feet high. So anything over 17 is considered major flood stage. And the Mississippi expected to continue rising at least another four feet, potentially cresting later this week, if not this weekend. A cruise in the capital city now bracing for the full impact of the rising waters as they block off more roads and trails and pile on those sandbags to make sure those structures are prevented, are safe from the water seeping in. As some people here say they were caught by surprise as to how fast the water has risen. It's just crazy. We went for, me and my friend went for a walk five days ago and you could see, you know, we could park in this parking lot. We drove over here and it's just crazy how much has risen in just five days. 
Now, rising waters, as we mentioned, means some businesses have had to make that tough decision to close. So coming up in about half an hour or so, we'll let you know who's open, who's closed, and who's trying to hang on, guys. All right, Pauline Lee, live for us in St. Paul, where the red waters are continuing to rise. Pauline, thank you. Well, as the rivers do crest in the coming days, we know communities across the state are stepping up to help. Now, on the ground, about 25 Salvation Army volunteers are spread out across the state. They are serving 400 meals every day in St. Louis County. In places like Fairbow, the American Red Cross is also manning six shelters and a temporary evacuation point for those who have been displaced. The best thing you can do for anyone that you run into that might be impacted for the flood is to let them know to call 211 so that they know the resources out in their communities. The biggest thing to remember for these communities is when you show up is to first be an ear. Never assume what somebody else needs. Ask. And you can help these safe shelters by donating online at redcross.org or calling 1-800-RED-CROSS. In Waterville, the city has set up an account at Franston Bank and Trust. You can donate online or mail a check. Now we want to focus on what's happening up north because the good news is water continuing to drop for St. Louis County. For the last week, storms have caused devastating damage. More than 1,500 damage points have been recorded throughout the county. St. Louis County Public Works crews did complete repairs. That way they could reopen more than a dozen roads, even as the county is still in a public state of emergency. So from here in the metro to down south as far as Mankato, even as far as the Iowa border, we know roads have turned to rivers as communities try to prepare for the aftermath. And this also stretches up north to St. Louis County. Now we want to focus on the Rapidan Dam in Blue Earth County because there's some new video that captures the moment that one family's lives were washed up river. So this here is video that WCCO showed you last night. Look off to the left. You can see the White House barely hanging on after the river went around the Rapidan Dam essentially eroding the ground underneath it. Well, this is brand new video from this morning. Mm. Watch that house right into the water goes from the cliff to the river blue out county looking into any downstream impacts there. Officials saying that the dam itself they believe will hold. Yes, there, but this could cause some major environmental problems because of the volume of sediment that's withheld upstream of the dam. And that's more concerning uh, just for the potential ecological impacts of the dam. Now, in nearby Mankato, crews are building up a big dirt flood barrier to keep out that rising Minnesota River water. City says this is just a precaution. No one needs to evacuate. They will, although, alert families if any of that changes. Meanwhile, a mess along I-35. Look at this. This is video showing high water hitting the Faribault Woolen Mill. It's the Cannon River causing problems there. A Red Cross emergency shelter just opened up inside the National Guard's Faribault Armory to offer families food, shelter, and cleanup kits. Meanwhile, in the metro, we're also facing rising water. So here's the view from Kellogg Park in St. Paul. You can see just how far the Mississippi River has traveled up to the Robert Street Bridge. Yeah, and the rising waters are not just closing off streets and trails. Mm -hmm. They are also forcing some businesses and restaurants to make the tough decision mm -hmm. to close temporarily as they wait for these waters to recede. Pauline Lee joining us live this morning from St. Paul to tell us about this latest round of closures, Pauline. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, by all means, this morning is shaping up to be a beautiful day, a beautiful day to sit outside on the water and enjoy the waterfront dining options that we have here. So many of them, but unfortunately, some of them, of course, are not taking any chances with the rising waters. The Mississippi Pub in Ember Grove Heights, one of those restaurants, it closed on Sunday, posting these pictures to Facebook as the water continues to creep up on their patio. The Overboard Bar and Grill, also in Ember Grove Heights, closed on Monday. It posted these pictures to social media as crew work to put up a barrier in an effort to minimize any flooding. And then over at Willie's Restaurant in St. Paul, the dike is in place and they say they are holding strong, at least for now. Some residents say they're hoping for the best, not just for the restaurants and the other businesses, but also the farmers, too. It's one thing to be uh, inconvenienced and suffer minor damage, and it's another thing to have your entire structure where you live destroyed or have your uh, living your farm for the year wiped out. 
Now, City House, which is actually just across the way here on their website, they say they are still open daily, but they are taking it day by day, closely monitoring the river. And I also put a call into the Pool and Yacht Club. They have also now closed. Also called the St. Paul Marina, they are open, and that's because they have boats in the water that they have to protect. But they did say flooding this time of year, which is late, is especially tough. And just down the way, down the sidewalk there, that's where you catch the Paddleford River boats. I called them to and their voicemail says due to Mother Nature's fickle mm. attitude, they closed temporarily this past Sunday, guys. Right, and we know the crest is not quite here yet, right, Pauline? So we still have yeah. a couple more days. days of this before the water is, is really making it back to where it was. Yeah, that's right. So just last night, it reached past major flood stage, which is over 17 feet this morning. It's about 17.7 or so. Still expected to rise at least another four feet, possibly cresting later this week, if not this weekend. So still a long ways to go. And then you think about all the cleanup, if any of those businesses had damage. And so it's tough being mm -hmm. closed for a day or two, even a week or maybe a couple of weeks, especially for flooding this time of year. Yeah, especially right. not knowing what's in that water, too. That cleanup mm -hmm. effort's going to take some time. Pauline Lee, Life Force in St. Paul. Oh, Pauline, thank you. So in the metro or Minnesota, our neighbors out west are dealing with flooding as well. All new this morning, our Jonah Kaplan shows us the damage in North Sioux City, South Dakota. Heather, AJ, good morning from North Sioux City, South Dakota. And the scene behind me in this neighborhood right by McCook Lake, uh, it's, it's simply breathtaking. I want to get out of the way so you can see it because here's a home that looks like it was basically just sucked into the ground. And if we take a walk, it can't be a long one because the roads have been ripped apart. You will see some devastation that looks more like a hurricane might have blown through here, like a tornado, maybe even an earthquake. But we know it was none of those things. It was a flood that no one saw coming. So after seeing some of the flooding and damage in Iowa here in South Dakota, uh, it's, it's just a completely just different category of disaster because we're told that residents won't even be able to come into this neighborhood for at least a month. First of all, crews can't get anywhere because the road, again, is ripped apart in so many different places. But also, we understand that homes are actually out in McCook Lake. So even boats, uh, especially those with, with propellers, power boats, can't get through because they're worried about what kind of debris might be underneath. We had a chance to speak with Governor Christy Nome yesterday, and she told us that this is going to be a very, very long term recovery restoration effort. Uh, but there is some good news this morning, uh, and that is especially for commuters, because we know there was that 24 mile stretch of I-29 that was closed. It took a true team effort, a round the clock effort to get it back open this morning. So that eliminates that hour long detour for anyone traveling along this corridor and coming up later on CBS mornings. We're going to show you more of those incredible scenes, some overhead drone footage. Uh, you're really not going to believe uh, just what the power of water can do. Heather and AJ, back to you. Absolutely. All right, Jonah Kaplan for us this morning.